Okay. This is the 2012 um, suspense account part one. And um, it says O'Connell's private car valued at 7,000 was presented to the business. This car was later sold on credit to a debtor of the business for 7,600. The sale had been treated as a cash sale. Now, the tricky thing here, I suppose, is when they put this in first, O'Connell's private car valued at 7,000 was presented to the business. That's a bit of a red herring because you don't actually have to do anything with that or about that because it doesn't say that um, this wasn't entered in the books or it doesn't say that it was entered incorrectly in the books. So you don't have to do anything to do with um, capital or anything like that for the actual presenting the car to the business. You just assume that, okay, fine, it was presented to the business and they probably put it in the books fine. So no need to do anything. Uh, this is the only thing you need to deal with. This car, and you could take that as a car, was sold on credit to a debtor of the business for 7,600. So sold on credit to a debtor of the business for 7,600. So the two accounts that should have been affected when you uh, sell on credit to a debtor is the sales account and the debtor's account. The debtors are asset, so plus minus, and sales, we treat them like a gain, so minus plus. Okay, and so however, the sale had been treated as a cash sale. So instead of doing sales and debtors, they treated it as a cash sale and they did sales and bank or sales and cash. We normally like to do bank here. So again, assets, so plus minus. So here's what they did. Uh, they treated it as a cash sale. So the sales went up by 7,600 and the bank went up by 7,600. But it wasn't a cash sale. You didn't get any cash for it. So we must put this down again by 7,600. And what should have happened was sales should have gone up by 7,600 and the debtors should have gone up by 7,600 because it was a credit sale. So we need to put that into the debtors account. So your only entries are um, this and this is what we're putting in and no suspense entry. Okay, so the next one then is part two, O'Connell had returned a motor car previously purchased on credit from a supplier for 9,000 and entered this transaction in the relevant ledger accounts incorrectly as 99. So the relevant um, accounts are, it's O'Connell who's returning the motor car, so that's purchases returns and from a supplier on credit means it's creditors. So purchase returns. Creditors. And creditors are liability. So minus plus. And purchase returns act like the opposite of purchases and purchases act like an expense. So uh, minus plus also. Okay, so what they did was, it says in the question, um, enter this in the relevant ledger accounts, so in the purchase returns and the creditors, incorrectly as 9,900. So they put the purchase returns up by 9,900 and the creditors down by 9,900. Okay, because apparently we don't owe as much to our creditors because we return stuff and this just records how much more we've returned. Uh, then, however, credit note subsequently arrived from a supplier showing a restocking charge of 300 to cover the cost of the return. Fine. The only entry made in respect of this credit note was a credit entry of 8,700 in the creditor's account. So they did something. They put 8,700 um, uh, on the credit side of the creditor's account. So 8,700 credit side of the creditor's account. Now, what I like to do is to see what is it that you should have in your creditor's account and what is it you should have in your purchase returns account. So just looking at the creditors and taking the exact facts of what did happen, O'Connell returned a motor car for 9,000. So your creditor should be going down by 9,000, but they're charging 300 as a restocking charge. So your creditors is only going to go down by 8,700. 
So ultimately what you want is your creditors to go down by 8,700 and your purchase returns to go up by 8,700. So that's where we want to get to after we adjust these accounts here. So starting with the purchase returns, if I want this to say plus 8,700, well, it's plus 9,900 at the moment. So I want to reduce it by a little bit. And what I need to reduce it by is 1,200. So 1,200 in here, circle around it because I'm going to enter that in my journal. And then my creditors, well, I want it to be a, a minus 8,700. At the moment, if I get my calculator and calculate what I've got, I've got a minus 9,900. So minus 9,900 and I've got a plus 8,700. So at the moment I've got a minus 1,200. So I want this minus 1,200 to become a minus 8,700. So it means I have to go from this minus figure down to this figure. So to get down as far as that, I've got to go down by another, what is it, 7,500. So that's minus another 7,500 or down by another 7,500. So those are my only two entries in the journal along with whatever suspense I need to put in to make it balance. Finally then in part five, it says, Car parts previously sold on credit for 920 had been returned to O'Connell. These returns had been incorrectly entered as 20 euros on the credit side of the equipment account and as 290 on the purchase account. So the question was, um, why is there a debit of 20 in the equipment account? Well, um, all that should have happened when car parts uh, that were sold on credit are returned to O'Connell, well, that's sales returns and debtors they're the only two accounts that should have um, should have been affected uh, the equipment account the equipment account is a fixed asset account so the type of equipment that a um, garage owner would have and the type of thing that would be in their equipment account would be things like a car lift or equipment they use to fix cars maybe however these car parts that uh, o'connell is selling though that's actually stock not equipment. So this uh, 20 euros entered in the credit side of the equipment account should never have been put in there. There shouldn't have been anything put into the equipment account because we're talking about stock, not fixed assets. And that's why you put a debit on the, a debit of 20 euros in the equipment account to cancel out the 20 euro credit. Okay, okay so the next one is from 2010 and it's part three. McCarthy won a motor vehicle valued at 30,000 in a draw. McCarthy gave this vehicle to the business and took an old vehicle from the business valued at 22,500, which was to be used for private purposes. The only entry made in the books regarding both vehicles was a debit in the cash book of 22,500. So maybe if we deal with that first of all, the cash book means uh, either cash or bank account. Okay, so the only entry made was, where is it again? A debit in the cash book 22,500 so a debit 22,500 now all that's happened here is uh, McCarthy gave a vehicle and took a vehicle no cash or no bank nothing no money has changed hands so the bank account or the cash book shouldn't have been affected at all so we can cancel that out straight away 22,500 gone so the next thing is what should have been affected? Well, if we're talking about McCarthy giving a car to the business and taking a car, you can do this in two ways. Either you can do, for the giving a car, you can use the capital account, and taking a car, you can use drawings, or you can treat this as kind of one transaction. So for instance, if McCarthy gives 30,000 and at the same time takes a vehicle worth 22,500, uh, if you kind of write one off against the other, uh, the upshot of it is that McCarthy's giving 7,500 worth of car. You know, if he's taking 30,000 and sorry, if he's giving 30,000 and taking 22,500, um, if you put the plus 30 and the minus 22,500 together, really it's the same as plus 7,500. So if we take it that 
capital is going up by 7,500 instead of like going up by 30 down by 22,500 or capital up by by 30 drawings up by 22,500 you can just put this one entry in here <clears throat> but what's against that then well since McCarthy is a motor dealer then cars are McCarthy stock now in these questions you never have a stock account if there's stock coming into the business it's always purchases if there's stock going out it's always sales so in this case since you the McCarthy is there's stock going in and out you know but we're doing it we're taking it as a net effect we're taking it that there's 7500 of motor vehicles coming into the the business then we're going to take this as purchases of um, 7500 so again our purchases uh, acts like ex expenses and that's all that should have happened is these two and this shouldn't have happened now i suppose again to explain this a little bit more if you imagine like again vehicles are stock for this particular business there are two ways normally they can um, purchase stock they can purchase it on credit and so the purchases goes up and the debtors goes up they can purchase it for cash in which case the um sorry the the purchases goes up and the creditors goes up i should have said they can purchase it for cash in which case the purchases goes up and the bank goes down or in this case what they're doing is they're purchasing it by if you like giving away a bit of capital in the business so the purchases goes up and the capital goes up because they now owe more to the to the um owner of the business for this stock that they got Okay, so lastly, then I'm going to look at number two in 2010 again um, to explain why the 13,500 in the creditors uh, goes on the debit rather than the credit side. So we had McCarthy returned a car previously purchased on credit for this much from a supplier, entered this transaction as the wrong amount on the correct sides of the correct accounts. So again, if it's returning a motor car that was purchased on credit, it's purchases returns. which we treat as a minus plus and creditors which we treat as a minus plus as well um, that are affected now what did they do enter this as 16,500 on the correct sides so when uh, McCarthy returns goods the creditors goes down 16,500 because uh, McCarthy owes less money to these creditors and the purchase returns because you're only recording how much is being returned goes up oops because you um, returned more goods so that's what was entered incorrectly now a credit note subsequently arrived showing a transport charge of that but nothing was entered in the books that's fine the only entry made in respect of this credit note was a credit of 15,000 in the creditors account a credit means 15,000 on the credit side of the creditor's account. So we'll put it in here. So these are the things that they did. So no circle around them. How are we going to fix them? Well, in this particular one, again, I always like to check to see what is it I want my creditors and my purchases returns to look like when I'm finished. So minus plus. So what happened in this question? Um, returned a motor car which was purchased for 15,600 however was charged a transport charge of 600 so ordinarily if you return goods worth 15,600 you should owe 15,600 less so your creditors should go down by 15,600 but then they're charging you 600 euros as a transport charge so it goes up by 600 so down by 15 6 and up by 6 is the equivalent of just down by 15,000 so you want your creditors to be minus 15,000 and you want your purchase returns to be plus 15,000 oops 15,000 okay
that's what you want so let's try and make them become that at the moment the purchase returns is plus 16,500 we only want it to be plus 15,000 so we've got to reduce that by 1,500 to get to where we want if I put this in the calculator now minus this plus that I'd get plus 15,000 just what I want I want to do the same thing for this but first of all I want to check what have I got at the moment I've got a minus 16 5 and a plus 15 so altogether that's a uh, if I put it into the calculator that's going to give me a minus 1500 I want it to be a minus 15,000 so how do I go down further to minus 15,000 I have to go down by another uh, minus was it 13,500 and so if I have to do that this is where I do it to go down from the minus side reduce if you like 13,500 so it must go on the debit side because I'm trying to bring it down even further and then of course I'll enter these two into my journal and whatever suspense amount I need in order to make it uh, balance